So I've covered my computer pretty extensively on this channel and some of the changes gone through and the updates and parts I've installed. And one of the really common questions that I have is on my cooler setup. So I had the 9800X3D and I got it uh, on release day in a combo pack from Newegg and I had to buy it with the Asus ROG Crosshair X870E Hero ATX board. And then I paired it with the Arctic Freezer 3 420mm. And I did this for a couple of reasons. Is I've covered this quite a bit, but the, the AMD processors, the cooler you can keep them, the higher they will continue to boost until they hit their PBO limits. And it allows you to maximize your frequency and load under the most amount of situations possible. So a lot of people will say like, hey, they're not that hard to cool. You don't need much of a cooler. While that is true, you know, in order to keep it under its 95 degrees thermal limit um, from the factory, you don't need a massive cooler to do it. But the cooler you can keep the CPU, the more performance you're going to find. And I think I've demonstrated that. I've put up, uh, you know, pretty decent benchmarks across the board uh, for my CPUs, and I've been able to obtain uh, pretty good overclocks on them. And this became more evident when uh, when Curve Shaper came out, because suddenly there's it's not just the thermal limit, you know, because when the 7000 series came out, it was kind of the theory that let, hey you can just allow it to boost till it hits its thermal limit and then it'll be fine well with the release of curve shaper it's evident that there's certain throttle thresholds that if you can maintain below those you'll find a little bit better performance and the one that i always like to target is that 50 degrees celsius because that's going to be your medium heat where you can run a more aggressive undervolt so that you can maintain on the curve shaper a higher frequency per voltage so it's not really a true undervolt but for a given voltage we're going to run a higher frequency and we can get more aggressive in that medium temperature limit when the temperature starts rising the cpu needs additional voltage to stabilize it and then it's a never-ending cycle because more voltage equals more heat and so on and so on so what we've done is uh, I've gone ahead and I've gotten a video. I took the opportunity because a lot of people had asked me, how do you fit the Arctic Freezer 3 on the ROG Crosshair board? Because as you can see here, there's an M.2 cooler on the ROG Crosshair board that is pretty tall. It's probably about an inch, inch and a half tall. And it can interfere with the tubing from the CPU cooler. I did not anticipate how much of a problem this would be for people because I'll be honest with you, I just installed it and didn't even think twice about it. So you'll see here in a minute when I remove uh, the head of the cooler here, my only thought is, is that most kits come with several different risers. And if you're not using the appropriate riser for your CPU, you might not make good contact. But that's the only thing I could see determining the height because... Uh, my tubes, it's close, but they fit. I mean, when I go ahead and remove this, you're going to see there's no real marking. There's no real scuffage. And clearly, I have a good uh, seated mount on it because my temperatures have been phenomenal. So with this cooler, you can see here, it's going to be the 420 millimeter uh, reservoir, which is going to have 340 millimeter fans on it. So this thing is definitely massive you can potentially not fit this in your case depending on how large your case is i have a lot of people ask me what case i have i have the deep cool ch780 deep cool is not available for sale in the us anymore so in this market you can't get it but there's plenty of other cases that'll fit this uh like i have the fractal uh north extra large on another one of my builds that'll fit a 420 millimeter i believe but bottom line in my opinion, if you have the space, it's worth going overkill on the cooler because this is nothing compared to like a custom loop. I mean, the Arctic Freezer 3 420 is $115. I mean, this is nothing compared to the cost of the rest of these parts, and it has done a phenomenal job cooling. 
And as you can see, as I begin to pull this apart here, so there's basically a plastic cover that does the RGBs. It's got some electrical connectors here. You pull those off, you got two screws and that'll remove the head. And then we can see right here, now that I've got it removed, this is my 9800X3D coming out. There's, there's no marks here. They're not touching. It looks close, but they're not touching. And then underneath these four screws here are those risers. So the only potential thing I can think of is that maybe people are using the wrong risers, but if you have that height incorrect, you're not gonna get a good seat on the cooler to the processor. So I would think you would have further problems and you would figure that out. But that's kind of where we're at. So as we come in here, you can uh, see I went ahead and removed one side. Here's the black risers. You want to make sure you're using the correct pair there. We get the new CPU in. My technique, I know there's about a million ways to skin this cat. But I go a little bit overkill and then I spread and wipe. So what I do when I'm using my paste is I just create an X and then four dots in each sector of the X. And then I come back in, I just find that that makes it easier for me to uh, spread the paste. And I come back in with, uh, honestly, I'm using a piece of paper here, and I just spread it thin, wipe off any excess. Because uh, I've had some people ask me, like, you know, hey, I don't see the temperatures you're seeing. Uh, I don't think it makes that big of a difference. You just want to make sure you have an even spread. But there you go. I've gone ahead and spread it across the whole top of the CPU. And then we reverse the process, reinstall the bracket. You can see there, no damage. It's tight, but at least on mine it fits. I reinstall the actual head of the cooler. And then we get the little RGB cover back on. And that's it. So with that, um, this pump is amazing and it gives you a ton of thermal headroom. If we come in here, uh, I've got the 9950X3D installed now. My last score, 2557. Pretty solid. We'll start running Cinebench. This is the actual computer you just saw it get installed in. You can see right now my peak on the non-X3D cores has been just under 5.9 gigahertz. On the X3D, it's been just below uh 5.7 obviously when you go into this heavy all-core workload the active frequency is going to be lower there i do have a pbo tune on this cpu which i will get a review out showing exactly what settings i'm running currently and then i've got the uh 6200 cl26 uh 64 gig kit that i previously reviewed on my 9800 x3d still running in here and if you look at these temperatures this is what's crazy to me we're running an all-core workload on a 16-core, 32-thread CPU, and we're looking at 74 degrees Celsius. That is absolutely, absolutely unreal for just an all-in-one that's 115 bucks. I mean, we're not even, we got 20 degrees of headroom before we hit the thermal limit on this CPU. And... You can run this again and again. I've done multiple Cinebench runs, and it just kind of hangs out right about here. This is absolutely awesome. I haven't really messed around with Intel since uh, the 12th gen, which is what's actually in my box that I record with. But I can tell you right now, if I run Cinebench on that computer, even with an undervolt on it, it's going to jump right to the thermal limit. And it's just going to ride it there, and that's going to dictate the performance you get. By having this massive cooler, I'm able to keep the thermals down, which allow me to find other limitations to get the maximum amount of performance out of this CPU. So we'll kind of leave this going, and then we'll take a look at a couple of you know gaming performance here. So we'll let it go in the background, just really cook this CPU. So we got Cinebench running in the background, and then we'll take a look at some more movies. So here we go in Counter-Strike 2. As you can see on a gaming workload, it's sitting sub 50 degrees, which is where I want my CPU so that I can get the largest amount of uh, 
curve shaper because I have it set up on the medium temperatures to be my largest negative curve. So I want it to sit about that 50 degrees. And you can see here it's pulling about 45 degrees, 136 watts, and it's running about 5.6 gigahertz on the X3D cores, which is just awesome. Now I am putting together some information comparing the 9800 uh, X3D to the 9950 X3D. And it is really cool to see your X3D cores running at 5.6. But I mean, other reviewers have already put it out there. There's some sort of penalty with the dual CCD still or, or something because in reality, it's like back and forth. Some games are a tiny bit faster on the X3D. Some are a tiny bit faster on the uh, 9950 X3D. It works out to be in about average. Uh, there are some other benefits that I'll get into when I release uh, that video, but it is cool just to see like, hey, I'm running 5.6 gigahertz on cache cores. That's that's freaking awesome. And we're able to do it because we're keeping that temperature so low. So bottom line, the Arctic Freezer 3 does fit on my Asus X870E ROG Crosshair Hero. I feel like it's got four names in one, but it, it does fit and uh, it does offer amazing cooling capabilities for the price if you can fit it. Now, the good news is, hey, maybe you can't fit the 420. Uh, they make a 360 version, a 240 version. They make all sorts of versions, and, and I've used a bunch of them. I've used the 360 and the 420 in the past, and the Arctic Freezer 3, it's great performance for the dollar amount. I mean, at this point, you know, I'm not going to get any additional performance going cooler than this. So on this sort of system, building like a custom loop or something like that would be a complete waste of time and money um, because this is absolutely phenomenal cooling on this system. And we've got some other ones. We can take a look at Hell Divers. I just kind of ran around my little ship. Still running about 5.6 gigahertz, about 46 degrees, pulling, you know, 130, 140 watts. And then the voltage, it's usually been sitting uh, with my current setup between like 1.2 and 1.3, which is going to be higher than the 9800X3D, but it's because you're running two CCDs, uh, additional cores, all that stuff. And as long as you're keeping it at 1.35, uh, you, you're basically safe. That's the way it's designed to be ran. But it's kind of a shorter one today, but I just wanted to get that out there. And we can see Cinebench has been running for a little while now, and we're still sitting uh, 75 degrees Celsius. So that's absolutely awesome. And I'm doing a bunch of different stuff, but I've been able to regularly score above 2,500, which uh, also of note is about what I was getting on just my pure 9950X. So this CPU is truly kind of the best of both worlds but i'll get more into that when i go through kind of my full impressions of the cpu once i've been able to play on it a little bit longer i just got this thing installed last night but i just knew i had that question a lot i'll have links uh to the arctic freezer if you're interested in it and the other stuff we talked about in this video they are affiliate links so if you click on them they support the channel and i appreciate that but, uh, you know, good luck building and have fun gaming out there, guys.